Welcome to Sensa Hermanus, located in the beautiful coastal town of Hermanus in the Western Cape of South Africa. We look forward to introducing you to the various activities and services that are undertaken at this facility during your tour. Sonsa was officially established in 2010 to unify and optimize South Africa's endeavors in space science research and technology. But we actually have a long history of contribution to space science research prior to that inception date. In 1940, the magnetic observatory that had been located at the University of Cape Town was moved to Hermanus to escape the disturbing impacts of the electric railway system. The facility is now a preserved magnetically clean area and has participated in many global studies over the past 80 years. In 1960, we participated in the first Sanai expedition to Antarctica to take over responsibility for various magnetic and auroral observations there and we continue to send teams there annually. And our Space Weather Centre was launched in 2010 to study space weather and provide space weather forecasts to various industries. The Space Science Programme is responsible for fundamental and applied space science research, monitoring and forecasting the impacts of space weather, monitoring the near-Earth space environment using ground instruments, the provision of magnetic technology services, human capacity development in the form of postgraduate training and research scholars, science engagement through our Science Centre and the general promotion of science, engineering, technology and innovation. We hope that you enjoy your tour with us. Welcome to the Space Weather Centre. My name is Mpochi Sapungo and I'm a Space Weather Practitioner heading up this facility. Here at the Space Weather Centre we monitor the sun and the space environment between the sun and the earth. The sun is a sphere of hot plasma and it radiates energy into the universe and we all know it provides light and energy for us here on earth but it can also suddenly eject particles and plasma from its surface. These are known as solar flares and coronal mass ejections. These eruptions are physical and electrically charged and this is known as space weather. One of the global challenges that we're experiencing at the moment is space weather. And one of the reasons it's a global challenge is because of the vulnerabilities that it creates on technology. The importance of monitoring space weather is it really relates to the fact that as a modern society, we've become very dependent on electronic devices and electronic communications. And space weather involves a lot of high energy moving charges, which results in very large currents, which affects the magnetic field. And these disturbances can affect electronic devices, such as communications or navigation or power systems. And we are becoming increasingly vulnerable to those effects. Our knowledge plus our instruments and our data and our expertise in forecasting those impacts can help protect those sectors from those vulnerabilities. So some of them would be, for example, in the aviation sector, you can have impact from communications, both high frequency communications and satellite communications. And one of the things you don't want is a disruption in your communications to the cockpit or to the air traffic navigation services. The second part that is very vulnerable to space weather is navigation. So these days we use satellite-based augmentation systems, we use GPS to navigate, a big airplane can land whether it's raining or stormy or etc. But if you have bad space weather, you can have impacts and errors on those navigation readings, which can affect our ability to land and take off safely. In addition, one of the sort of lesser known impacts from space weather is additional radiation exposure to passengers and crew in flights, particularly flights they fly at the higher latitudes. The uh, Sansa Space Weather Centre is a forecasting centre. This allows us to take data that we've got either recorded on the ground or from satellites looking at the sun and make forecasts of the impact of space weather that's either happening now, so a form of now casting, or that's about to happen, so a form of forecasting. Because we can typically see space weather storms coming from the sun two, three days in advance.
This is the department at SANSA known as the Engineering and Data Acquisition Unit. One of SANSA's objectives is to collect, analyze, and to disseminate space and Earth observation data. To do this, SANSA operates a network of instruments across Southern Africa, the Southern Ocean, and Antarctica. These are mostly in remote locations to reduce the amount of magnetic and electromagnetic interference in the surrounding environment. But that also means that if something goes wrong, we need to be able to travel to these isolated locations to do repairs, so it can be time consuming and costly. Our instruments monitor and collect data of what is happening in the near-Earth space environment, such as the variability of the Earth's magnetic field, how the upper atmosphere affects our communications and navigation, and even the intensity of radio signals from cosmic sources. Our engineering team maintain and monitor this network of instruments and are also responsible for safely storing all the acquired scientific data while ensuring that it is of the best quality. We also support teams who operate from the South African base, Sinai 4 in Antarctica, as well as Marion and Goch Islands, each of which is over 2,000 kilometers from Cape Town. SANSA sends teams to these locations every year for up to 14 months at a time to maintain the instruments located there and to ensure that the data is distributed to various global networks. One of the key instruments located in Antarctica is a high-frequency digital radar. This radar is one of the most advanced radars in the world and forms part of an international network of over 30 similar radars known as the Superdon. This radar sends focused radio waves into the atmosphere where they are reflected off patches of plasma and help us to collect information related to the Earth's interaction with space and the dynamics of space weather. The radar in Antarctica is really effective at monitoring space weather as it can focus on the entire area over the South Pole. The facilities at Marion and Gough Islands are utilized for similar purpose. The engineers based there do maintenance and perform updates on the research instrumentation throughout the year. Having a presence on these islands gives us a unique vantage point for studying space weather as there is little land mass within the Southern Ocean. In total, SANSA operates, monitors and maintains about 80 instruments across a network of 20 individual sites which amounts to approximately 6 terabytes of new data in our servers per year all in support of global space research efforts. So we are at the Applied Science and Technology Group of the South African National Space Agency. We have a magnetically clean area at SANSA and that means that the magnetic noise is very low. This noise is normally noise created by humans, industry, trains, cars and so forth. So it is important for us to preserve our magnetically clean area and we do that by ensuring that there are no magnetic disturbances close to us. The reason why we want to have a magnetically clean area is because we need to service our clients in terms of calibrations, avionics test and other magnetic applications. The most common magnetic sensor that everybody knows is a compass. It's been used for thousands of years for navigation, especially on the sea. So these days we have what we call an electronic compass or it's also called a magnetometer. These magnetometers measure magnetic field just like a compass. It can be used for navigation, for example, on a vessel on the sea. It can be used for navigation on an aircraft, on an unmanned aircraft, such as a drone. It can be used for navigation on a satellite. And satellites also use a magnetometer for orientation in order to know where they are in space so that they can turn towards the Earth for a camera or turn towards the sun for their sun panels. So they use this magnetometer, which is like an electronic compass, to orientate themselves. But now when you put a magnetometer on a system such as a satellite or on a drone, the drone or the satellite has magnetic material. So this influences the magnetometer. It causes errors on the magnetometer. We have a process where we can calculate the errors and adjust them so that we can get the correct output from our magnetometer, for example, for navigation. In order to do this, we put the satellite or the drone inside our large Hallermolds coil system it is the largest Hallermolds coil system on the African continent. We place the satellite or the drone inside the coil system. We apply certain fields to the coil system 
and then we can measure the magnetometer's response and we can adjust the output of the magnetometer for navigation or orientation so that the errors are no longer there. Some of the unique instruments we have here is a temperature chamber. The temperature chamber is non-magnetic. It basically tests the temperature range from minus 40 to plus 80 degrees centigrade. It is important to know how your instrument on a satellite reacts towards temperature because on the one hand it is on the night side of the earth then it is very cold and on the other hand it's on the sun side of the earth where it is very hot. And we normally uh, put magnetometers in the temperature chamber. It is non-magnetic so that the magnetism of the chamber does not affect the magnetometer itself while the temperature is changing. Another unique instrument we have at SANSA is a squid magnetometer. A squid is a superconducting quantum interference device. It is basically a very sensitive magnetometer that needs to be cooled down with liquid nitrogen in order to work optimally. The squid is so sensitive it can measure the changes in your brain or in your heart magnetically. In our case we use the squid to measure very small changes in the Earth's magnetic field. So in the future, we hope to have a network of squid magnetometers all around the Earth, and we will be looking at seismic precursors. Seismic precursors are a warning that an earthquake is going to take place soon. So we hope to have an early warning system that people can be warned that earthquakes are going to take place, as well as the position on the Earth where it will take place, so that a big disaster can be avoided. So the Sansa Science Center is the only science center within the 100 uh, kilometer radius of the Western Cape. So the role and the purpose of the science center is to excite the next generation into taking science, engineering, mathematics, technology and also be innovative about the things that they're doing so that we can grow the space sector or we can grow the space industry into be something that is very, very big in South Africa. So in that way, for the future, we won't have to say we lack in terms of researchers, we lack in terms of people that are doing science or space science in South Africa. One of the things that we try to do all the time is to simplify the science that is being done here at Space Science. Now one of the ways to do that is to do hands-on activities. We try to make those topics to be fun, we try to make those topics to be exciting to them. Because what we've noticed with learners is that with theory, it's not easy for them to visualize things. But when they're doing hands-on activities, that is when they get that excitement. So as part of our outreach also, as part of the Science Center, we also have the mobile lab that we take it to schools, especially your disadvantaged schools, your communities that are unable to come to Sansa. So what we do with the mobile lab, we take the mobile lab, which is very nicely built on the inside. So it has cupboards where we take apparatus, where we take instruments, it even has screens where if you want to showcase the space where the center. So we take the mobile lab to them, it's like taking the space agency to them. We're running science clubs. So our science clubs are mainly into coding, into programming, where we build robots with the learners, and then they code and then they program those robots into doing what they want the robots to do. So that is in line with the fourth industrial revolution. And also in terms of engineering, we, we do a lot of soldering. Where we solder, we also do a lot of simulations where the learners will build something, they simulate it, and then once they see it's working, then there's that wow factor and say, wow, this is beautiful. So whenever we get to high school, still we're gonna choose maths, science, engineering, technology. That stream will then take us into saying, one day I want to work for the South African National Space Agency. Thank you so much for visiting the Sansa Hermanas campus today. We really loved hosting you and we hope you found it inspirational and awesome. Please come again, looking forward to seeing you soon.